Uh, good evening to one and all present over here. Welcome back to second day of World Education Summit. I, Dr. S. Nagarajan, Principal of Surendra Institute of Engineering and Management, Siliguri, West Bengal, and Deputy Director of uh, CWSIR, invite you all to join for the prayer of virtual lighting of lamp to formally inaugurate the second day of World's Greatest Virtual Summit on Education. Sir, there's no sound here. Thank you so much for joining uh, uh, for second day of uh, virtual summit. Uh, before moving on to the today's agenda, let me brief, brief about our organization to the uh, panelist. Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research, founded by Dr. Smita Tiwari in 2019, and under the able presidency of Dr. Abhishek Pandey. Vision for promoting research and innovation, and targets the mission to strengthen the society with enlightened intellect and wisdom through the specific ideology from the specialized field. CWSIR is a staunch believer that research, creativity, and innovation can only guide the entire fraternity of education to a destiny that can produce good literature, research scholars, national, international patterns, a wider perspective to develop and implement feasible definition of living in the current scenario. Believing in team and collaborative work, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research pays heartfelt gratitude to its executive members, state and country coordinators, country ambassadors, board of directors, and CWSIR secretariat, and all other governing bodies members. And about the summit, the World Education Summit is the premier international platform dedicated to innovation and creative actions in the education sector. Here, top decision makers share insight with on-ground practitioners and collaborate to rethink and find out various emerging opportunities in the education landscape at present and in future. The summit aims to explore uh, groundbreaking innovations and encourage steps to ensure significant improvements in the global education sector, no doubt, education has been one of the most impactful sector worldwide. World Education Summit would provide everyone with the opportunities to network, share experience, and expand knowledge in the past developing academic sphere. The day one yesterday, we had a detailed deliberation on grass tour approach on new educational system from infrastructure to building a strong foundation. Uh, uh, around 21 uh, speakers from in and around uh, uh, various countries were participated and uh, uh, presented their uh, uh, views in this context. And today, the second day, we are going to discuss about the journey towards a new world, the new way of learning with offline, online, and with blended learning. The concluding day of the event, especially today, we would future about the future of education in India and the role of digital system, especially we are going to discuss about the, the past, present and future of the uh, education. And with this, I now invite uh, Dr. Kushum Kanwa, Executive Director, NITEX, CWSAR, to give an intro talk about our organization. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings and namaste to all luminaries and participants. Thank you, CWSIR, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research, Dr. Abhishek Pandey, sir, for the honor, 
and in gratitude to Mr. Nagarajan uh, for giving me this platform. The vision of CWSIR is to empower, enable, and inspire the trend of research and innovation to learners with the right foundation of values and culture through academic excellence for global perspective and to create an ecosystem for the holistic development of all stakeholders. Our mission is to provide an environment for research and innovation, encourage the research bent of learning that creates multivalent competencies in growing learners to enable them to become analytical leaders. Our commitments and uh, CWSIR is committed to uplift the society by providing voice and platform to women who are in the field of research and social work, thus strengthening them nationally and globally. Empowering schools to eliminate the rural and urban divide. Enhancing quality learning through sessions, igniting the spirit of innovation and research. To work towards achieving the United Nations SDGs, the Sustainable Developmental Goals to create a harmonious society. International collaborations to work on common projects to give maximum learning exposure to budding innovators. Our services, the society strives to empower and support every learner in the domain of innovation and research by providing a platform for the following, guidance to write theses and research pro proposal writing, guidance by experts to get original research papers published, assistance to get international patents, placement for the researchers and for those who are involved in research innovation and academia. Provision of platform to demonstrate innovative practices in education, commerce, arts, science and technology and others. Recommending the eligible members for the United Nations talks and for conducting master training in schools, colleges and universities around the globe. Curating the international conferences, summits, and quality sessions under our initiative. Our initiative at MEJEX, <clears throat> it organizes national and international conferences, seminars, symposiums, and quality workshops, academic curriculum assistance, and content writing. MEJEX is recognizing and honoring the general contribution of individuals in diverse streams and disciplines with certified and authorized awards and honoris causa doctorate on the basis of the exceptional work. There are innumerable strategies and projects to empower women, developing numerous workshops and trainings. Now to wrap up and last but not the least, personality grooming sessions and mentoring and coaching. Thank you and namaste and over to you, Mr. Nagaraj. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, let's move on to uh, introducing our uh, special guest and guest of honors of today's show. Uh, this is an immense pleasure to announce the world's best brines as the chief guest, guest of honor and keynote speakers in the second day of World Education Summit organized by Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. We feel so blessed to listen to the talk of history creators in the context of education in this grand global summit. It is really great to be witnessing the enlightenment, bringing wisdom and an iconic talent together. I would like to thank our Honorable Education Minister, Dr. Sri Dharmendra Pradhan for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest of this World Education Summit. Sir will be joining a little late. I also thank uh, Mr. Anurag Thakur, Minister of State, Finance and Corporate Affairs, Government of India. Uh, Sri Arjun Ram Nikwal, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs for their constant support and encouragement to make this uh, virtual summit possible. With that small introduction, let us welcome and introduce the, the guest of honors of today's summit, Dr. Abdullah Rashid, Minister of State Education, Maldives. Sir is the Minister of State for Education, Republic of Maldives. He is a distinguished educationist with 30 years of experience in the field of education. Dr. Rasid served as a principal of government school for 18 years. He is a former vice rector of AVID College and is currently head of the National Institute of Education. Dr. Rasid was awarded with title of the best principal of Maldives in 2010. 
He is also the Global Goodwill Ambassador of International Education Advisory Council. He holds his PhD in Institutional Leadership from Asia E University, Malaysia. And in Educational Leadership from University of Nottingham, United Kingdom. Shah will be the right person to comment about today's agenda. I request Shah to share his thoughts on today's topic with his experience. Sir, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and very good evening to all the uh, distinguished excellencies, participants and everyone. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure uh, to share uh, my thoughts and experience regarding uh, today's discussion, uh, journey towards the new world of education. I can say it's, this is extremely a uh, very important topic for 21st century. We are living in 21st century. Things are changing. Uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0, 5.0, uh, 21st century skills, knowledge-based economy, globalization. For because of all these reasons, we are living in a new world. Therefore, the journey of education also focus in such a manner. Years back, uh, teaching was very much teacher-centered very much content oriented, very much exam oriented, believing that education is just memorizing, education is just transferring the knowledge. But now we all know education is more than that, broader than that. And the purpose is to prepare our students for 21st century. Therefore, the teaching learning for the new world should be transformed. Uh, it should be more project-based. It should be more problem-based. Uh, should give emphasis on developing students' creativity. Knowledge is now everywhere. Previously, only the lecturers or, uh, or the teachers are only the source of knowledge. But now it is no more because knowledge is everywhere. Knowledge is everyone's fingertip. Therefore, why should we just pour the knowledge? Rather than doing that, we have to make it more practical. We, we, we should give more emphasis on developing students 21st century skills, as I said before, out of these 21st century skills, the most important or the highest priority in my belief should be developing students' creativity. Because we know that the richest people in the world, richest companies in the world, they are not using any natural resource. They are not using wood, land, gold, silver, wood. They are using the intellectual uh, capital. They are using the creativity. Some names, if you, na if you name some, uh, the richest people, uh, the top in the list, everyone, their business is led by, driven by creativity and innovation. Jeff Bezos, founder and the president of Amazon, innovation, creativity, Microsoft, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page, Tim Cook, and the list goes on. So all these people are rich because of, because of their creativity and innovation. Even some rich research show that in less developed countries, the kind of work we do are routine work either done by machine or routine work done by the people. But in developed countries, it is creative and innovative work. More research, dissemination, dissemination of knowledge, creation of knowledge. Therefore, rather than taking much time, let me tell you, in new world, we have to transform the way we teach, the way we educate. Even we should redefine education. I don't really believe that just uh, giving a test paper to the students and students just write the knowledge and then we say this is the brightest child, that is the uh, best child, child. I don't think because in the real life it's not how uh, students work or people work, people create uh, or be productive. Therefore, with this note, I like to conclude by thanking everyone for listening to me, organize, organizers for inviting me. Uh, it is really great, good to create knowledge uh, and do the research, disseminate the research. That's the most important thing. 
I wish this conference would be a very successful conference for you all. Thanks and a wonderful uh, night for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for your wonderful speech, especially uh, you have uh, nicely highlighted about Industry 4.0 and 5.0 and how education sector can support for the fast growing industry revolution. Thank you so much for your wonderful speech on uh, second day of uh, virtual summit. Now I uh, humbly request and invite uh, Dr. Jagadish Gandhi, legendary education at India. And Dr. Gandhi, a visionary icon of value-based education in mighty India for more than 50 years, and a visionary and a far-sighted person. Uh, Dr. Jagadish Gandhi has been building bridges of peace across the globe for nearly 50 years for his long-standing contributions to education in peace, the United Nations awarded the prestigious UNESCO Prize for Peace Education in the year 2002 to his unique creation, the City Montessori School, popularly known as CMS, which Gandhi founded in 1959 and has been serving as its founder manager with a small introduction. Now I invite Dr. Jagadish Gandhi, legendary educationist, to give an inaugural speech on this grand virtual summit. Sir, over to you. Yeah, Mr. Akhilesh, uh, Akhil uh, Abhishek Pandeji, Mr. Nagar Rajanji, and just now I heard Dharmendra Pradhanji is about to come, and I heard Dr. Abdullah Rashid, Minister of State for Education of Maldives. It's a wonderful speech he has given. Dear friends, that today's education has given men four ills. Godlessness, ignorance, confusion, and conflict. The purpose of today's education must be the redemption of mankind from its godlessness, its ignorance, its confusion, and its conflict. What is uh, the school? A school must be restored to its traditional role as the transmitters of morality, builders of character, and custodians of the culture. Dear friends, education is a continuous and a creative process. Its aim is to develop the capacities latent in human nature and to coordinate their expression for the enrichment and progress of society by equipping children with material, human, and divine knowledge. Through education, religious capacity, develops analytical ability, confidence in oneself, willpower, and goal-setting competencies, and instead the vision that will enable him to become a self-motivated agent of social transformation. Dear friends, Man has three realities of life. Man is a material being. Man is a human being. Man is a divine being. He needs a balanced education of all the three realities of life. Victor Hugo said, there is one thing is stronger than all the armies in the world. And that is an idea whose time has come. What is that time has come? You know, the balanced education of all the three realities of life is the, you know, uh, is an idea whose time has come. So our schools are giving material education too much. But at the same time, human education and divine education should equally is important. And all the three realities of life must be catered. Simultaneously, you know that uh, a child has three classrooms. First, the mother's lap, the home of the child. Second is the formal school. And third is the society. These are the three classrooms of a child. And man has three characters. His innate character is inherited character 
and it is acquired character. But as far as the question of innate character is concerned, innate is God given, is born with the character, a child is born with this kind of character, so we can't do anything. Inherited character also comes from the genes of the parents and grandparents. So we also can't do anything. And the third thing is the acquired character. With the child acquired from home, from his school, and from the society. These are his three classrooms where from the child learns the lessons of life. As far as the question of our home is concerned, today's home, the parents have no time to educate the children, give them a balanced education of all the three realities of life. They have no time to give human education and divine education. The only thing they ask is the, to the child, how many marks you have got? That is all. Beyond that, they are not prepared to teach him human education and divine education, whereas these are the realities of a child. Man is a material being, man is a human being, man is a divine. Dear friends, the basic purpose of all the religion is to safeguard the interest and promote the unity of the human race and the foster the spirit of love and fellowship amongst men. That is the basic purpose. The basic purpose of education is uh, uh, the redemption of mankind from its godlessness. These are the four ills. That should be the first purpose of education, that is redemption of mankind from its godlessness, its ignorance, its confusion, and its conflict. The children should be prepared with this idea that one day I will unite the world. Ek din dunya, ek karunga, dharti, swarga, banaunga, aur vish shanti ka sapna ek din, sach karke deklaunga. This is the 21st century education. Dr. Abdullah Rashid gave importance to this aspect. He said, that we need to give 21st century education. And this is the education for the 21st century. Prepare the mindset of our children to be global. So we have to prepare our children's mind as a global citizen. Education for the 21st century must be different from that of the 20th century. In the 21st century, a child should be given the education of how to make a world parliament. You know, in our school, children are exposed to the world parliament. Every class, they have to perform a world parliament in every function. So we are creating the mindset that ultimately in your life, you have to make the ultimately goal should be to create a world parliament, not the United Nations, kind of United Nations, where there are five veto powers, America, China, Russia, France, and England. We don't want these veto powers. We want a world parliament as envisaged in Article 51 of the Constitution of India. Article 51 of the Constitution of India says, the state shall endeavor, A, to promote international peace and security, B, maintain just and honorable relations between nations, C, foster respect for international law, and D, encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration. The question is, who will do the arbitration? United Nations, is beset with five veto powers, and that is, it is divided into five power blocks. So they cannot decide the issues between the nations. 
for example the issue of india and pakistan they have not been able to solve the problem of india and pakistan israel or palestine south korea or north korea you know there are many problems all around the world and there have been so many territorial wars between india and pakistan there have been three wars so it's everywhere but the question is israel and palestine every day there is a war the question is united nation is uh, an organization of nations who are the members they donate money it is a institution being run by donations but what kind of world parliament is the need of the hour recently the whole world has faced corona and this corona is such a deadliest disease which we said uh, you know which can be tackled only by unity of the entire mankind our prime minister has several times said that now the time has come for the unification of the world so the whole world should be united and children should be prepared right from the childhood to think in terms of forming a world parliament i send my children every year to for the past two years i am not sending because of corona but previously i was sending my children to america every time for uh, visiting the kennedy space research center but there was one thing compulsory for them to go to the united nation and visit the general assembly hall so that they realize that one day they have to create a world parliament of this kind where the whole world can come here so this kind of mindset we are preparing for the 25th century so we are preparing a child is holding the globe on his head this shows that we have to think in terms of globe the earth is but one country and mankind is citizen ye pura prithvi ek desh hai aur manushya matra इसके नागरिक है ये धरती हमारी माँ है और परमात्मा हमारा पिता है और परमात्मा की जितनी भी ये संतानें सारी दुनिया के संतान ये सब एक परमात्मा की संतान सारे मैसेजर्स ऑफ गॉड ब्रॉड द मैसेजेस ऑफ गॉड दे हैव ऑल कम फ्रॉम वन गॉड द मैसेज हैज कम फ्रॉम वन गॉड सो दिस काइंड ऑफ एजुकेशन इज टाइम हैज कम the 21st century education must be given to our children that god is one religion is one man is one so this kind of education is the need of 21st century the children should realize there is only one god god of krishna god of muhammad god of nanak god of jesus god of uh, bahula bab and god of moses abraham all the god is only one they are all messengers of god they have brought the messages from time to time from age to age that uh, you know our bhagavad gita says yada yada hi dharmasya gnanir bhavati bharate abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam syamya paritranay sadhunam vinashay cha dushtatam dharma sansthapana tay sambhavam युगे युगे टू इंस्टीट्यूशनाइज द रिलीजन धर्म स्थापनार्थ नहीं धर्म संस्थापनार्थ आइए संस्थापना बने संस्था की स्थापना करना नई नई नियमावली देना समाज के लिए जब साढ़े सात हजार वर्ष तू भगवान श्री राम इस धरती पर आए तो मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम भगवान श्री राम कहलाए क्योंकि उन्होंने मानव जीवन को मर्यादित किया और ये जो मर्यादा की शिक्षा है ये मानव जाति के लिए है ये हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई ये है उस समय तो कोई जातियां भी नहीं थी जब राम का जन्म हुआ साढ़े सात हजार वर्ष की कोई भी जाति नहीं थी केवल मानव जाति थी पांच हजार वर्ष पूर्व भगवान कृष्ण का आगमन होता है और उन्होंने कहा यदा यदा धर्म से निर्भवत भारत अभ्युत्थान मधर्म से तदात्मानम सुजाम्यम परित्रणा साधु नाम साधु प्रवृत्ति के जो लोग हैं 
उनका परित्राण करने के लिए अन विनाश आए जो दुष्टता दुष्कर्म करने वालों का विनाश करने के लिए विनाश आए जो दुष्टता धर्म संस्थापना चाहिए टू इंस्टीट्यूशनाइज द रिलीजन टू गिव द न्यू सोशल लॉ रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द डे आई विल कम अगेन एंड अगेन तो प्रति बार बार हर युग में एक अवतार आते हैं और नया नया संदेश देते हैं साढ़े सात हजार वर्ष पूर्व राम आए पांच हजार वर्ष पूर्व उसी परमात्मा की ओर से कृष्ण संदेश लाए ढाई हजार वर्ष पूर्व उसी परमात्मा की ओर से भगवान बुद्ध संदेश लाए जिसमें था सम्यक ज्ञान सब बराबर है ये ऊंच नहीं गलत है सब ब्राह्मण बड़े ऊंचे क्षत्रिय उससे नीचे वैश्य उसके भी नीचे शूद्र उसके भी नीचे ये व्यवस्था तो मनुष्यों की बनाई है परमात्मा ने ऊंचा नीचा किसी को नहीं बनाया तो बुद्ध ने कहा सम्यक ज्ञान दिया और उनके चले जाने के बाद करीब आज से दो हजार वर्ष पूर्व प्रभु यीशु मसीह आए उन्होंने कहा लव दाई नेवर अपने पड़ोसी को प्रेम करो और सारा संसार परमात्मा का पड़ोसी है तो सारी सृष्टि से अपना मानो कि सब हमारे पड़ोसी है सबसे प्यार करो यही बात उन्होंने कही कि इस करुणा और दया जिसमें होगी उस पृथ्वी का राजा बनेगा इस पृथ्वी का सम्राट वो होगा जिसके जीवन में करुणा और दया हो और 1400 वर्ष पूर्व हजरत मोहम्मद आए उन्होंने कहा पहली आयत जो कुरान शरीफ की है उसमें है खुदा रब्बुल आलमीन है रब्बुल मुसलमीन नहीं वो मुसलमानों का नहीं वो आलमीन का रब है इस धरती का रब है सृष्टि का रब है सारी सृष्टि को बनाने वाला एक अल्लाह है एक खुदा है उसके नाम अनेक है उसे जर्मन लैंग्वेज में क्या कहते हैं फ्रेंच में क्या कहते हैं रशियन में क्या कहते हैं इस हर भाषा में उसका एक नाम है उसके नाम तो हजारों उसे इंडिया में भी भगवान भी कहते हैं ईश्वर भी कहते हैं अल्लाह भी कहते हैं खुदा भी कहते हैं वाहे गुरु भी कहते हैं उसके नाम अनेक है लेकिन वो एक है तो ये बातें बच्चों को बताना आज के युग में बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि आज जातियों के नाम पर झगड़े हैं धर्मों के नाम पर दूरियां बढ़ रही हैं झगड़े बढ़ते चले जा रहे हैं तो ये सब आ, बच्चों को आज की शिक्षा इस 21वीं सदी में ये शिक्षा देना बहुत जरूरी है तो बच्चों को ये शुरू से ज्ञान कराए कि एक ही छत के नीचे हो अब सब धर्मों की प्रार्थना परम पिता है एक सभी का सम्य हो ये भावना तो एक पिता है अब सब में हो भावना और सभी धर्मों की प्रार्थना एक ही छत के नीचे हो हमारे स्कूल में एक ही छत के नीचे सब धर्मों की प्रार्थना होती है सर्व धर्म प्रार्थना जिसके लिए महात्मा गांधी जी मॉर्निंग और इवनिंग सर्व धर्म प्रार्थना करते थे उनकी शिक्षा यही है महात्मा गांधी जी ने कहा था इफ वी वॉन्ट टू टीच द रियल पीस इन दिस वर्ल्ड If we want to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. यदि हमें युद्ध के विरुद्ध युद्ध करना है और यदि हमें शांति लानी है दुनिया में तो उसका एक ही तरीका है और बच्चों की एजुकेशन विक्टर ह्यूगो ने नेल्सन मंडेला ने कहा था एजुकेशन इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल वेपन विच यू कैन यूज टू चेंज द वर्ल्ड तो यहाँ पर जो एजुकेशनिस्ट बड़े बड़े बैठे हैं मेरा उनसे यही कहना है कि ये तो आ, आपके हाथ में एक ऐसी चीज है बच्चों की शिक्षा कि यू कैन चेंज द वर्ल्ड तो ये सारी दुनिया बदल सकते हैं आप तो ये आ, बदलने का समय आ गया है और आ, मैं समझता हूँ कि मेरा टाइम पूरा हो गया है तो मैं अपनी बात को समाप्त कर दू या मुझे टाइम और है क्या बताएं पूछा कि मेरे बेटा हुआ है मैं इसे बहुत महान बनाना चाहती हूँ तो कैसे बना सकती हूँ तो सहेली ने कहा ये तो बहुत आसान है अरे किसी मान से दोस्ती करा देना मानता के गुण आ जाएंगे तो तेरा बेटा मान बन जाएगा तो पुजली भाई बोली कि ये महान 
कहा से तलाश करूंगी मैं और कोई महान मिल भी गया तो मेरे गांव में क्यों आएगा तो सहेली ने कहा कि देख ये तू संसार का सबसे महान पुरुष बनाना चाहे तो बहुत आसान है बोले वो कैसे अरे सबसे महान तो परमात्मा है वो तो हमारे घट घट में है उसकी तू दोस्ती करा देना तो परमात्मा से दोस्ती कैसे कराऊंगी अरे उसको परमात्मा के भजन सिखा देना उसको कीर्तन सिखाना उसे अच्छी अच्छी ईश्वर की बातें बताना और तो उसकी माँ की बात समझना ही उसने एक चद्दर बिछाई अपने बच्चे को उसमें रखा पोटली बनाई और धीरे धीरे मंदिर में पहुंच गई मंदिर में जाके पोटली खोल दी और बच्चे को रख दिया भगवान के सामने और गुनगुनाने लगी इसे अपनी शरण में ले लो नाथ इसे अपनी शरण में ले लो रे नाथ अपनी शरण में ले लो नाथ इसे अपनी शरण में ले लो रे नाथ रोजाना भजन करती और पोटली बनाती कंधे पर डालती ले आती धीरे धीरे करके गांधी जी बड़े होने लगे और एक दिन मंदिर में ही आंख भी खोल दी और कानों से सुनने भी लगी और माँ का जब सौम्य स्वरूप देखा भजन करते हुए तो माँ पर वो मोहित हो गई और माँ से भजन सीखने लगी और फिर तो यहाँ तक हो गए कि माँ जल्दी चलो मंदिर में सत्संग छूट जाएगा हमारे अच्छे अच्छे भजन सुनने से हम वंचित रह जाएंगे तो माँ से जल्दी जल्दी चलने के लिए कहने लगे थे एक दिन एक टीचर उनके घर आए और उन्होंने मोहनदास के गांधी जी के पिताजी मोहनदास करमचंद गांधी से कहा कि आपका बेटा बड़ा ढीठ हो गया है हैं गुरु जी मेरा बेटा आपकी आज्ञा का क्या पालन नहीं करता जिया नहीं करता है तो उन्होंने कहा बताइए क्या बात हुई तो उनके कल हमारे यहाँ इंस्पेक्टर आए थे उन्होंने एक कैटिल शब्द दिया कि सब बच्चे स्पेलिंग लिखे सब बच्चों को आते थे सब ने लिखे इनको आते नहीं थे तो जब इंस्पेक्टर आगे निकल गए तो मैंने अपने बूट से इशारा किया कि तुम आगे के बच्चे से नकल कर लो तो मेरा मंतव्य तो समझ गए लेकिन इन्होंने नकल नहीं की और ये फेल हो गए और मेरे स्कूल का रिजल्ट भी खराब हो गया तो गांधी जी के पिताजी बोले कि मेरा बेटा क्या सचमुच इतना महान है कि आपके कहने पर भी उसने नकल नहीं की जी हाँ नहीं की तो उन्होंने कहा कि गुरुजी मैं अपने बेटे पर गर्व करता हूं कि आपकी बात नहीं मानी परमात्मा की बात उसने मानी तो बच्चों को परमात्मा का ज्ञान कराना परमात्मा की आज्ञाओं को पूरा कराना बच्चों को सिखाना चाहिए विक्टर बहुत सारे लोगों ने कहा है कि बच्चों को शुरू से ही पालने में ही अच्छे अच्छे गुण माताएं पिता भर देते हैं माता पिता दोनों ने महात्मा गांधी के जीवन में अच्छे अच्छे गुण भरे जब वो लंदन जाने लगे तो माँ ने सीख दी बहुत सारी सीख दी कि तुम बीड़ी सिगरेट नहीं पीना तुम किसी स्त्री के साथ बुरी भावना से मत देखना और जो जो चीजें बताई गांधी जी ने उनका पालन किया और गांधी जी धीरे धीरे करके इतने महान बने तो मेरा कहना मतलब यही है कि बच्चों को माता पिताओं को भी एजुकेट करने की जरूरत है आज के स्कूल का काम केवल क्लासरूम में बच्चों को अंग्रेजी भूगोल गणित पढ़ाना पर नहीं है मेटेरियल एजुकेशन देना जरूरी है इसलिए सर्वश्रेष्ठ मेटेरियल एजुकेशन दीजिए लेकिन ह्यूमन एजुकेशन और डिवाइन एजुकेशन दीजिए और इसमें भागीदारी पेरेंट्स की देने के लिए पेरेंट्स को बुलाइए भारी तादाद में जिसमें कि उनके बच्चों के कार्यक्रम कीजिए ताकि अब तो कोरोना खत्म हो गया है अब तो कार्यक्रम हो सकते हैं तो इसलिए बच्चों के माता पिता आए और उनके सामने ऐसे कार्यक्रम बच्चों से कराइए जिससे कि उनकी आध्यात्मिकता का विकास हो और उनके करेक्टर का डेवलपमेंट हो और चरित्र का निर्माण हो तो माता पिता को ये भी प्रिंसिपल को सीख देनी चाहिए कि अपने घर में वो शांति बनाए रखें अपने घर में 
यूनिटी लाए क्योंकि आज के युगावतार बाहुल्ला ने कहा है माय फर्स्ट काउंसिल इज दिस फॉर दिस प्योर काइंडली एंड अ रेडिएंट आर्ट द दान में भी है सोवरेनिटी एंशिएंट इम्पेरिशेबल एंड एवरलास्टिंग तो हमारा हे प्राणी तो एक पवित्र दयालु और ईश्वरीय प्रकाश से प्रकाशित हृदय धारण कर तो ये भावना बच्चों में पैदा करनी चाहिए और इसी के लिए तमाम लोगों ने कहा है कि तमाम महापुरुषों ने यही सब बातें बताई हैं तो बच्चों के मन में ये डालिए कि वन डे आई विल यूनाइट द वर्ल्ड एक दिन दुनिया एक करूँगा धरती स्वर्ग बनाऊँगा विश्व शांत का सपना एक दिन सच करके दिखलाऊंगा थैंक यू वेरी मच गॉड ब्लेस यू thank you so much sir for your uh, wonderful inaugural speech on uh, uh, education especially you have nicely highlighted about uh, various perspective of education and the importance of uh, human values uh, to this wonderful platform and uh, once again i uh, convey my sincere gratitude on behalf of cwscr thank you so much sir next i call upon the another great uh, 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 educationist Dr. Manpreet Singh Manna, former director AACP, associate professor at SLIEP, a centrally funded deemed university established by government of India. I request to I request Dr. Manpreet Singh Manna to share his experience on education. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I am a grateful to the whole organization to giving this opportunity to. see such a gala event and to listening such a great visionaries i was listening to abdul rashid ji and of course very honorable gandhi ji whatever he spoken a single single word is uh, touching the heart of every human being those are really doing something in education field and i believe every human being is a teacher and every human being is a student first and the teacher are the great learner of this world we are the true learners we are the effective learners then only we can participate something so in this education summit and it's a world's education summit if we will speak of the one area one region i think we'll not do the justice and i know that the agenda for this summit is to be understand to recommend to come forward to make some sort of recommendations how to create a global citizen how to create a global citizen and if i'll take forward the journey of this discussion from our very honorable speaker who just spoken before me about the three schools starting from the mother's lap and going till this the you know, divine energy divine education it's it's really a matter of concern i just share uh, i from my childhood i was hearing about iq eq sq and pq the questions are amazing and we have delivered so many talks you know on the different platforms by keeping these questions and we do present it very well yes of course if your emotion quotient is already there along with your physical quotient of course spiritual quotient so then eq can be get balanced but one day during the covid when i was sharing with my students and they were got depressed you know were sitting at home sir we are not able to come to the classroom we are not able to get a physical interaction with you all people and the libraries and our peers we are getting depressed whether jobs will be there or nothing then i realized and immediately apply for the copyright what was that i applied for the notiness question nat khatta pan childhood so and i got a very very different different responses from my students sir ye aapne kaise socha kyu socha yes what is that i feel i believe i may i may put my words it is my word it's my personal uh, opinion you may agree may not agree jab tak insaan ke andar uska bachcha jeevit hai wo insaan kuch bhi kar sakta hai kuch bhi kar sakta hai जब आपके अंदर का चाइल्डहुड खत्म हो जाता है यू नो वाई दिस थिंग केम इन माइंड वेन आई वॉज प्लानिंग फॉर द स्वयं फुल फॉर्म बिकॉज द मंत्रालय गिवन अ वर्ड स्वयं टू बी गेट अ वर्ल्ड द लार्जेस्ट मुक्स प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर विच आई कुड सपोर्ट ए आई सी टी एम एच आर डी बींग फार्मर डायरेक्टर ऑफ स्वयं सो आई वॉज एक्सप्लेनिंग द वर्ड एस डब्ल्यू वाई एम स्टडी वेब्स ऑफ एक्टिव लर्निंग फॉर यंग स्पेरिंग माइंड आई रियलाइज यंग स्पेरिंग माइंड मीन 
हमारे देश में दो शब्द यूज होते हैं अगर उस शब्द को हम दूसरे प्रायवाची में यूज करते हैं स्पीक समथिंग बूढ़ा वी फील इट एज अब्यूज बट वेन वी कॉल इट एज अ बुजुर्ग इट इज अ वेरी रिस्पेक्टफुल वर्ड बिकॉज वी जनरली से वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू समथिंग न्यू और मे बी समथिंग अ डिसीजन वी मस्ट टेक एडवाइज फ्रॉम अवर द एल्डरली पेरेंट्स एट होम दैट इज कॉल्ड बुजुर्ग एंड बुजुर्ग आर द मोस्ट यंग स्पेरिंग माइंड बिकॉज एवरी डे दे आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम अस फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन दिन सेकेंड जनरेशन एंड ऑफकोर्स ऑफकोर्स द थर्ड जनरेशन एंड दे गिव अ वेरी एक्सक्लूसिव रिमार्क्स कमेंट्स रिकमेंडेशन फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्सिक्यूशन सो हु आर द ग्रेट मेंटोर्स ऑन दिस अर्थ दो आर द सीनियर सिटीजन elderly people you know and what is the missing what when uh, gandhi ji was talking here i was realizing till my age people though have uh, cross 40 they got this opportunity to be sitting along with the grandpas and grandmas dada dadi and nana nani to understand what geeta says what ramayana says what sukhmani part says what the qurane sharif says because parents do not have the time all the four hands are working that's why they are fetching the luxurious life to the students because nowadays the kids are asking for the ac they are asking for the itv they are not asking only ki mele pe leke jao aur ek bas ek khilona dila do pura saal uske sath khel lunga ab nahi hai the same day they are asking for the second toy and they are not even asking they are going to the amazon and they are buying it themselves because papa's uh, credit card cvb number is already by hearted by them and the parents are given this leverage you please ja simran ji le apni zindagi it's something different you know so the same time we are giving a luxuries to them are we giving the essential essential properties of their life and that comes from the grandparents dada dadi ki kahani nana nani ke nuskhe and why this families we were the joint families we were the joint families we were not we are today if i'll say even the husband and wife staying together they say we are the joint family <laughs> most of the cities like in india and they are staying together why so we are becoming so nuclear so nuclear so nuclear so this is me we have disseminated the university what university our uh, our previous speaker what is spoken the first university the first college the first classroom is a mother's home and mother's homes the you know what the chacha and chachi has to uh, put the role what dada and dadi has to put the role when mossi and mossa has to put the role this all faculty members are went away and the two teachers available that is a mother and a father they are very much busy for their uh, career and for their uh, fetching the food and fetching the shelter and other kind of uh, demands of the kids it does mean that our first patshala got dismantled now i'll come to the second patshala that is my school education from beginning from the school itself the teachers keeps in mind their school result their class result their city result they forget what is the development we required they are looking every student sitting in the class should be uh, either should be go for the medical or maybe for the engineering they never think that i need a great politician also from my school i need a great a great sportsman also from my school i need a great musician a forget it i need a great human being from my school from my class they only worries about the 10 10 cgpa nothing else 10 cgpa all tom dick and harry is sitting in a class they never distinguish who is the slow learner and fast learner that's why the movie comes tar is the meeper so this movie was the eye opening i think i still we could not open our eyes to watch and to understand what tar is the meeper wants to be give the theme the plot was very great the theme was very uh, heart touching but we just uh, uh, we just watch the movie we just uh, appreciate in the uh, crowd and the gossips and that's why we forget all the teachers including me i am also forget it the third part shala the third part shala is the society when they are coming from the school education to the higher education like a technical education or maybe other professional educations the faculty is concerned about their own research first bhaiya mujhe professor banna hai you do this thesis you do publish this paper put my name as an author so that i can get a credits nobody is bother what student is asking for you they asking only for the index 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 not happiness index sorry not happiness they are asking for the research index of course but in my india we should understand every college is not meant for research and still we are failed to identified which universities are the research universities and which university are the teaching universities and we are putting the same kind of guidelines for giving any kind of promotions or recruitments or everything same same guidelines 
they have never distinguished okay these are the teaching universities i will see the outcome how many your passed out students are doing amazingly in this world maybe they are doing some ngos they are doing some uh, volunteer services for the nation they, or they are the great sportsman and we are asking no how many books you have published how many patents you have done how many research papers you have published then you become professor hag vice chancellor director blah 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 where is the end have we ever bothered how many generations passed out from you and how many come back to you to even giving you the marriage card wedding card sir aap meri shaadi pe nahi aayenge to main shaadi nahi karne wala hu that is a true education aapka juda hua bacche ke sath so i think my second and third partshala also got dismantled somewhere and finally when all partshalas are over and we are in the society to be served to the nation because first come for the learn and goes to serve to the nation or serve to the mankind serve to the society i think we are failed aap mujhe aadhi roti khilaoge to main pura nahi bhagne wala hu i can't run because you fetch me half you fetched partially to me you have not given all ingredients all vitamins to me that's the point so who who's at the fault are the parents are the teachers or the policy makers or the regulators or the government i think we all collectively should take this responsibility yes we all has to understand it we have to understand it it starts from the parents this journey goes to the regulators and the policy makers when we are going to be you see such a amazing document came nep 2020 national education policy is a amazing document i don't find any page any paragraph any point which is not relevant to the essence of the education or a credibility of the student but implementation can be a challenge without doing the mindset change without doing the mindset change without creating that ecosystem in the faculty system educational system we can't implement such a beautiful document that is called a national education policy 2020 of india it's a it's a milestone and it came after 35 years and it has to be remain for next 20 years i'm sure in next 20 years no next policy is going to become we can't afford it for a four four year sitting and doing the brainstorming with the multiple people and then finding out this kind of draft and finally it's going to be get published and we talk about the multiple entry exit it's amazing we talk about the language point formula it's amazing everything but have you ever checked what the teachers pain teachers responsibility and the teachers due respect to be given in the society today in chandigarh if i'll ask for a driver for my car i have to pay 18000 rupees per month but for a teacher in a school i am getting 6000 rupees per month available with b ed m ed and with the five years experience sir please nokri de do sir please nokri de do 6000 bhi chalega what is that and moreover teacher should not have a salary it's a honorarium because we can't buy a teacher we can't buy a services education is not services it's just your services towards the nation it's a very cause it's a very noble cause in the society to teach someone and a professors like gandhi ji has spoken i am sure in his school they must not be charging that huge fee but they are giving the great values because when he spoken i was wondering i must visit sometimes lucknow to visit him personally so i will definitely go and visit to uh, jigdish gandhi ji there so this is what we have to collaborate in america in some countries what they have taken you know you, you are retired sir yes you are retired 60 plus sir are you free yes i am free so can you spend some time as a mentor to my school and college they do happily come do we have this system i think we are still silent the great great professors from iits from iims they are sitting at home idly they are reading newspapers they are art- writing articles they are watching tv but they cannot come because you never open the doors to them and what they expect from you they have a sufficient sufficient amount in india the pension the gratuity the post retirement benefits are too good because poot kaput to ta ki usi chai poot saput to ta ki usi chai so they don't have to put the money in their account so they are sufficient only they need a respect they need a respect if we'll give a respect and the mentors will come to the schools and colleges i think they will do the mentoring not only the learners even to the teachers those are the great learners of my country of my society that's that's my belief so in this uh, this kind of platforms uh, we should speak uh, away from we should not be so diplomatic to speak we should speak very true heart 
and this is what uh, our previous speakers have done this is what i am doing we should understand what are our strengths you know the best skills if anywhere it is in india it is in india i can debate for a whole day if anybody speaks ancient value skills dronacharya said the first virtual classroom was the dronacharya classroom when eklavya have proven it with this virtual classroom system it's not from today and tomorrow we are doing this zoom and skype it happened years and years and years back when that was because that was a feel ek shishya ko pata ki guru mere andar hai mera role model hai aaj role model blue aapke bollywood star role model ho jate hain teacher nahi role model ho pa raha kisi ke ghar mein professor ki tasveer mujhe bata dijiye kisi ne lagayi ho ke apne ghar mein lekin uske ghar mein celebrity ki tasveer ho sakti hai koi bhi acha bollywood celebrity i do love i do love celebrities i have no problem but do we have the same kind of a respect जिसने मुझे बनाया इस दुनिया में आपके सामने बोले लाइक बनाया उसकी तस्वीर तो मैंने लगाई नहीं अपने घर में वो गिवन मी दिस लेवल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स एंड दिस लेवल ऑफ कंटेंट टू बी स्पोकन बिफोर दिस काइंड ऑफ अ गाला इवेंट हु इज दैट इज माय टीचर हु इज माय ट्रू मेंटो आई थिंक उसकी तस्वीर मेरे पर्स में होनी चाहिए मेरे घर में होनी चाहिए मेरे गुरुद्वारे में होनी चाहिए मेरे घर के मंदिर में बिकॉज दे शोन विद अथ काके लागू पाए भले हारी गुरु आपने जो गोविंद दियो दिखा जो गोविंद दियो मिलाए सो दिस इज दिस इज दट द एजुकेशन सेज एंड दिस इज वट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू कंक्लूड थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू बी स्पोकन बिफोर ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू thank you doctor you have uh, spoken about uh, today's teachers problem i really uh, convey my gratitude on behalf of uh, teachers fraternity really people are facing lot of problem uh, uh, during pandemic and post pandemic also you have nicely pointed out the real problem faced by uh at today's teacher thank you so much on behalf of uh, all the teachers thank you thank you and uh, next i call upon uh, the another great personality uh, dr uh, onat pandey uh, professor ip innovation and entrepreneurship at jnu formerly dean abvs me jnu program director aim niti ayog government of india member iprpp sir i request you to share your experience on your specialization open to you sir thank you uh, nagarajan ji it is re indeed really a privilege that uh, i have been given the opportunity to share my thoughts on the education in this august gathering um we are really blessed with the uh, time frame where we are discussing brainstorming on the policy which is going to last for next few decade and i think that's the time frame where we are going to set the ball which is going to roll and which is going to build the country and the generations and on this important topic i, I am really please to uh, listen jagdish gandhi ji and manpreet ji uh, we met in ai city earlier i think uh, nep 2020 with manpreet ji has mentioned this is going to fulfill the domestic need whatever the education system which has been uh, imparted throughout this time frame hardly that was serving to the society how many rural or grassroots challenges which are being addressed manpreet ji uh, was involved into this uh, smart india hackathons the major objective was to throw the problem statement to the students and let student utilize their knowledge so in my view the education system should have a practice practice theory practice approach first practice is for them to learn the grassroots challenges where the shoe is pinching student should know i think that should be the approach where they will see the entire surrounding their imagination their thought process will get open up and then they will start analyzing the things which is surrounding to them 
second is the theory let them learn gain the knowledge let them uh, be exposed with the actual theoretical concepts practice and then second practice is to address this challenges utilizing your own knowledge technology learning and the classroom teaching which you have or practical teaching which you have acquired from the academic institution and that should be really the transforming on the other hand we also need to emphasize on a moral values and character building patriotism for any country the humanitarian value should be at a peak and that is the need of an hour the way uh, the global peace is being challenged i think we need the future citizens who are working on those fundamentals and that can be built through the education system and those that education system is the need of an hour we all know that 21st century is the knowledge century the technology adoption the way it is rapidly happening and uh, the students and kids are adopting the the way technology is being utilized by them i think we need the uh, proper amalgamation of uh, digital intervention in the education simply by giving the classes on the virtual platform won't serve the purpose we will be in need of a change in the curriculum change in the examination and evaluation pattern we will be in need of a continuous evaluation what exactly which fundamentals are strong for a particular student and where he is face, uh, facing the difficulty and the technology and ai intervention in education system can make it possible the school principal sitting in his office can know that which student in which class is facing which difficulty in which subject that much specification is possible in nowadays and such kind of a digital intervention is required in education and secondly it's again a challenge where exactly the internet penetration has reached government has ensured that internet fttth is reaching to each and every village in india but how this should be utilized what should be the mode of application of the internet penetration in education i think that's the challenge and that should be addressed and uh, in the forum like world education summit this should be uh, the point of agenda for all of us the fourth aspect which i want to emphasize is the education should address the local need and initial phase of the schooling should always have influence of the local culture local system local festivals local language our cultural values the the student should have a pride for their history their uh, the history is not just the 150 years of a history which is being captured into the textbook that that's the uh, shift which is required that we need to teach them the history of a, of a chemical sciences history of a physics history of a maths history of the economics history of the trades history of the uh, calculation and accounting all these are really very much in need 
how can a generation forget this and how can we afford to uh, skip this kind of a uh, uh, important element from the education that that's again a uh, important point and i think uh, national education policy is giving us the opportunity to rejuvenate the entire education system in a holistic manner we all have seen the importance of a data management and cyber security the kind of a tech savvy generation which is utilizing the technology in in toto then they need to get the exposure about their data and the uh, data security and cyber security are we prepared to offer them this kind of exposure they they can practice the technology but they are not aware about their own data they are not aware about the cyber security the way data is being utilized i think government has utilized and offered this opportunity but this is not getting translated into the education system from 2014 onwards in pre 2014 there was a data for each and every citizen which was captured in the form of aadhar their facial expression their fingerprints their identity their date of birth that their uh, residential proof their gender data everything was there into the system but this government has effectively utilized in translating those data into the uh, offering the benefits through this government programs they were knowing government was knowing that uh, by linking this aadhar with the uh, pan card they would able to know that how many people can afford to surrender the subsidies in the lpg connections and how many beneficiaries are in need of a subsidized actually at a zero cost and that was the beautiful interpretation of a data and execution of a program few crore people have surrendered their subsidies and few crores have got the cylinder at their home without any cost so excellent data utilization in government and governance are we prepared that next generation is going to use this kind of platforms this is not just a government responsibility we are 135 crore of a population in india we are generating billions of gb data how much of a infrastructure is equipped for this how many such a uh, hardware software engineers which we have to manage this data we need the futuristic education where our domestic need is going to get fulfilled it's a high time to rejuvenate the entire education system knowledge systems and uh, equally bring the local and domestic need education should fulfill the domestic need for the citizen and that kind of education system which we should be thinking we are nb 2020 is not just a document we are building the entire 30 40 50 years of education system though the next policy is likely to come after 25 30 years but this will have the impact of the work which is going to be done now implementation people feel that implementation is not yet taking a pace but i can see that implementation is already happening in jnu we are in multidisciplinary education our engineering students are also uh, getting the economic scores getting the innovation course getting the entrepreneurship course they have a dual degree in engineering as well as the management or economics in in jnu we have the amalgamation of a sanskrit biology and ayurveda how can ayurveda be taught without the knowledge of a biology and sanskrit or sanskrit without having the exposure of a chadak sanhita or uh, rugveda and our all vedas 
which has equally the important elements which is being taught all the entire this amalgamation is required and this has already been started in gnu and many other universities also so time to rejuvenate entire education system we have been given the opportunity to set this system and world education summit is also offering us the opportunity to reset this sustainable development goal our technology and innovation should be focused on addressing all these sdgs how can we address the sdg problem without the technology and innovation into this i think this is the time for setting this ball rolling in the direction where the societal needs are fulfilled i am thankful to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to sharing my views thank you thank you very much thank you thank you doctor for your wonderful speech next i call upon uh, shri tulsi dewari a member board of governors iit uh, bilai entrepreneur mindset coach strategist an economy and author founder and ceo ultra tech laboratories private limited sir i request to share your uh, opinion on this today's agenda first of all thank you very much mr nagarajan and uh, i appreciate the organizers to bring us all together here on this uh, wonderful platform and uh, to begin with i like to thank dr man manmreet manpreet i'm sorry dr manpreet to bring the point of his speaking from honesty and all that he said if i can sum up in one word amounts to intellectual corruption and we should be willing to look at self critically at all levels the point is how big is this challenge about the education actually i want to share one very short story it's a question actually and i request each one of you to ask this question in your own mind about the people know from your own life and you may ask others also what do they think you will get a feel the question is like this and generally i ask this questions from parents who come across me there are three kinds of children i ask them first is a child who is trying to bully other friends other people there is a child second time who is always getting bullied by others and the third one he is he or she is neither bullying anybody or not gets bullied by anybody so if you take all the people you know from your life just in a quick calculation you know mind at what percentage of people you know from your personal experience of your own life journey fall in category 1 category 2 and category 3 generally my understanding has been that people hesitate and finally they come up with something less than 5% in the third box where the i neither the people will get bullied nor they bully anybody and then i ask the second question how many of you parents would like your child to be in the third box where they are neither getting bullied by anybody or not bullying the answer is always 100 so our journey is very very far when we talk about the reality of something going wrong having said that we live in a world of confusion it is dominating world across it's not only about india it is across the whole world and that is why a trillion dollar debt on students in america is ticking like a bomb on the heads of american parents and their children who are paying so much money for education that they do not know because they don't get equivalent jobs so 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 much for the higher ed education and i i am also a student of american education system 
I studied in 79. I did my master's in chemical engineering from Chicago. So from those days of $5,000 a year, now it costing $100,000 a year. So that trauma and the confusion and the 30% Americans are actually poor. So what is right and what is wrong, nobody seems to be understanding. And we in India are wanting to follow the American model. And they themselves are confused what is going on. Look at uh, Britain, they are confused whether they should be part of Europe or they should be out of it. And finally, 50-50 vote in a borderline. And 50-50 voting is actually an indication of confusion, not about the clarity, because one has to take vote on some side. So maybe a 51-49 decided that they should be out, and still they are wondering. I'm just pointing to that the whole world is really confused today. It's absolutely confused about everything, that what is the purpose of life? What is the importance of money? I mean, so importance of education. Now, obviously, the importance of education, why so? I mean, I'll give you a simple thing, like any product which is selling in the market, whether it is a laptop or whether it is a sari that our women buy, you know, every product has been made in over a period of, say, one day or two day or five days, you know, if you take the production cycle. Now, does anybody buy a product where red color is in a sari is splashed over the blue color or blue color is splashed over the red color? You are so particular about the product quality when you are buying in the marketplace. And these products are manufactured in a matter of days. And here is a human mind, which is also a product, mind you. It is a product. It starts with a blank canvas as a child, and it takes 20 years to make this product. It is not a joke. This is the only product in the world which takes almost 20 years before a person can be called that he, he or she can be independent and they cannot get into the real life without that. And what is the kind of attention we give in terms of, in terms of your uh, making a sari, you are aware what material is required. You calculate all back, you design everything. You make sure that this line is there. It is not shifting here or there. And in case of children, what are the parameters we are setting that this is what I want to see in my child and whether it is deviating, am I measuring? Am I aware? What raw materials are required to make what kind of a child uh, 20 years from now? So there is a huge gap, you know, in our approach. So now when we talk about 21st century, what is the major thing? The most important aspect of 21st century is that it has brought internet revolution. And that internet revolution is a cause of major, major disruption all across in every aspect of life. Now the, this disruption is also naturally going to be driving education. It is common sense. So this is where the opportunity lies. So when we have a big challenge, when I mentioned that maybe we have to go from 5% of what we are having to 100%, that that journey, so the silver lining is this internet revolution, that here is the opportunity which can address that challenge. Now, I want to simply sum up by saying that uh, what Dr. Rundanji brought in, that we need strategic focus about next few decades. It's not one or two years or something. So strategic course corrections are required, in my view, in three points. And these three points are, number one, is about purpose of education. Let us be crystal clear, actually, what is the purpose of education? We cannot be saying hundreds of things. You know, hundreds of things can be subset of one thing. When you define that there is an Everest on Himalaya, you don't talk about 100 peaks, you talk about Everest, and then everything else falls in, the, uh, in place, you know, as to how a person has to reach Everest. So what is that one thing? In my view, the purpose of education, that Everest is one thing is, Create a self-learning mindset. Creating a self-learning mindset. How many children we can claim are self-learners? How many teachers? How many time you have to request students to learn, to appear? Or how many teachers themselves are self-learners? This is the question. And there are two qualities in my mind which are required to make a person self-learner. 
नंबर वन क्वालिटी पर्सन हैज टू बी क्लियर अबाउट पर्पज ऑफ लिविंग वाई डू आई वाई एम आई बॉन्ड वाई एम आई लिविंग वॉट इज इट गोइंग टू हैपन आफ्टर आई डाई सो द एंसर टू द क्वेश्चन इज इट इज नॉट मनी मनी इज ऑनली अ मीन्स टूवर्ड्स एवरीथिंग देर इज समथिंग ग्रेटर इन मी एंड दैट ग्रेटर इज वॉट लाइक there is a seed in my mind somewhere the almighty has put a seed in my mind i need to understand whether i am an apple i am an orange i am a banana or what is that seed of me i need to know as early in life as possible and then that is what i need to become so that clarity of living a purpose that i want to blossom to the fullest of my seed so that when i am matured i am my seed is got converted into hundreds of other seeds in the form of fruit whether it is an actor or a sports person whatever it is a scientist or a businessman or a politician but how many people can claim they know that what is their real seed inside you know talking about skills and intelligence and all these are these are this is this is where the confusion lies you know these are these are means they are not the goals a skill is a means not a goal and efficiency of uh, intellect is a means it is not a goal you know so irrespective of what is the intelligence level of a person every person can climb to the everest of his own peak one will be slower one will be faster it is not important whether one reaches the everest is important and that is possible in my view you know so uh, the two second quality which is required to be a self self learner i mentioned is the self confidence and i'll give you another story here very briefly very quickly you know my father never had an opportunity to go to formal education but luckily in his village of khudiala it's a very small village in rajasthan near jodhpur uh, by when he was 7 years old he had a, they had a guru in the uh, ground guru and he went through two years of education you know he told me that so he goes into that 4 o'clock they get up until 7 o'clock till at night time he is with them and uh, with the teacher and uh, lunch time only the children go to home now now at the end of two years of education the guru tells him my father and that's what i'm talking about 100 years ago 1934 you know and he tells him ja beta you, you know i mean let me speak in english only uh, um, go my son and that is to a 9 year old the guru is telling go my son in any part of the world and you can stand on your own feet now this is the self confidence this is the self confidence without which any formal education is meaningless so my point is that the self confidence has to become the second point in being a self learner now the now strategically i mentioned purpose of education is this second point i want to mention what is the role of society now this is again a strategic correction required in our in our mindset in society as a whole and this has been beautifully talked about by dr man matrit and that is about that respect for teacher to be the highest in society you know it it should be so high that everybody wants to be a teacher some day and mind you there can be a time in next 25 to 50 years hopefully and hopefully i see that such things is how is it i am just sharing one idea with you how is it just imagine a society where everybody is looking forward to become a teacher in a primary or middle school the requirement is so tough requirement of becoming teacher in a primary and middle school of a future society becomes so tough that a person make sure that he remains in a such a great shape in terms of his thinking his work his ethics that he is waiting with by the time he is 50 years old that somebody some school primary or middle school will invite him as a teacher and when in gatherings he is introduced to people all people say that he is a teacher of a primary school and that is the all that is required to be stated about a teacher that is i i i hope it is not seen as a utopian dream but without that without making teaching as a such an important element that uh, that uh, no matter how many billions of dollars you have but if you are a teacher you are ahead of that so this is the role of society 
to bring uh, the importance of teaching and that is mentoring into so the, and the third correction third course correction what is the role of government so these are the three points the third what is the role of government the role of government is very simple and straightforward and that is making sure that self learner that is a student and mentors their job should become easier and easier every day in three ways economically so that things are affordable physically so that it is not in a distant a bright child in a rural area is not accessible not able to access a professor in harvard now in digital world it's possible you know so physically and digitally which is happening now because of the internet revolution so this three correction this three strategic core correction in my view is the everest of the future of the education if it is done all other things will fall in place is my belief actually and finally i just like to say one sentence let respect of mentor earned over life command necessary discretions in decentralized manner because you can never make a law law driven systems that is perfect ever never ever a law driven system can ever be perfect the discretion has to be there with the mentor who has got the respect and that is how the decentralization of the regulatory methodology is required by the government thank you very much thank you so much sir for your wonderful uh, speech a small request to all the speakers uh, as you know that we are running out of time therefore i request all the speakers to restrict yourself uh, within 5 to 6 minutes so that you know we can try to uh, wind up our session as per our schedule uh, next i uh, invite the great personality from malaysia mr chipo yang hatar he is the author entrepreneur mentor and life coach corporate trainer at rich mind consultant malaysia sir over to you thank you sir yeah first of all i would like to say thank you to india and also sir, the organizer of our world education summit 2021 for inviting me to this uh, prestigious occasion um now i have um, a sharing on what is happening in uh, malaysia especially in my company the way uh, i see the situations after the pandemic and before the pandemic um, over years um, i have three topic to share and um, the first one is uh, the uh, pandemic moment um, sh show us the following number one we need to prepare ourselves for emergency um unexpected event like uh, before pandemic a lot of uh, parties in an uh, institution of higher learning even in a secondary school primary school they are not prepared yeah they are not prepared uh, to study online yeah and they all are stuck facing a lot of problem and uh, secondly so we need to have an alternative teaching method in today's education landscape where we need to have an online and uh, offline and also hybrid where we uh, apply both online and physical education uh, teaching method and the third one the way i see in uh, today's uh, uh, education system where a lot of a country in the world especially in the developed country they are not ready in terms of it infrastructure and gadget we can see especially in the area where students stay in a remote area where there are lack of uh, internet connections basically they are left out in this education uh, opportunity during this pandemic moment and also the next very important uh, focus we need to focus on post pandemic is we need to train our education provider can be the management can be the teaching staff in the uh, in the university or in the secondary school how to teach in various platform uh, we notice in uh, in malaysia there are a lot of uh, teaching staff they are not well trained to teach online they do not know how to manage uh, international uh, it gadget to give a uh, effective and efficient teaching to the student and also we need to create awareness among the citizen in the country to get ready to welcome new norm in a teachings and learning both uh, adult learning and also secondary school or 
at tertiary education where we can see a lot of uh, citizens, a lot of people out there, they still cannot uh, adapt to the changes of this post-pandemic to learn and to study, to uh, mingle, to interact with their teaching staff. And the next one, I see the most uh, problem that faced by the education provider, uh, there are lack of reading material and also references in e-library. I believe there are a lot of uh, universities and also tertiary education provider, they do not have enough reading materials and also uh, references or journal that is in an e-platform for the student, for the researcher, for the master degree student to do research. So they are having a lot of problem to complete their thesis, yeah? And the next one, um, this is very important, the way I see it is that uh, a lot of uh, institutions or provider, they are still in the process of designing examinations in e-platform, or we have this competency test via e-platform uh, to test the efficiency and the understandings of the student. The second area where I want to uh, discuss here in this world education platform is we need to shift our paradigm in education delivery system where learning can be done via conventional and unconventional method. Normal conventional must go to the classroom, must go to the lecture hall. Now we can choose either go to lecture hall or go to the virtual platform. And also nowadays, like today, I'm so fortunate, I'm so thankful to the Indian government. I'm also thankful to the uh, MGI for inviting me through this uh, Zoom platform where we can accommodate thousands of people at one time to study the same topic or to discuss the same common interest as compared to last time where we are confined to physical classroom constraint where only accommodate 20, 30, or 120, 200 people. And also now, we also need to learn how to be fun while teaching through technology assistance, virtual intelligence, and so on. And also, we, need, we can save costs as well. Like now, I'm in Malaysia, and all the counterpart is in India now. We can save costs uh, in learning via e-platform where we can save costs in terms of accommodation, food, transport, and et cetera. And also, this is the very important observation I see from Malaysia, where this e-learning received very good response from millennia, the young people after 2000, the born after 2000, and Gen Z, where they prefer to acquire yeah, the knowledge and also the uh, information uh, through third, uh, third uh, channel. That means they are not uh, preferred to fast to fast. They also want to have information immediately received through email, through WhatsApp, WeChat, Messenger, and etc. What they want is with immediate response to the information they wanted compared to the human contact. And the last sections I want to share over here is the challenges we face in new norms education landscape in the world. The first one is while we are uh, embracing e-platform in education, we need to make sure the education quality to be maintained. Education quality must be maintained to ensure the learner can learn with the uh, um, intellect and also the competency um, from the education. And also, we need to focus on the student to make sure they concentrate in the Zoom study or in the e-platform. So we need to uh, discuss, to study, to do research on how to ensure students in e-platform, they can remain focused for at least one hour to two hours without any distraction. And the next one, if we want to go into e-platform in, develop, in, in developing country, where internet is a problem, we need to ensure internet connection is stable, especially in rural area. So that those students, those learners in a rural area 
also can learn as compared to the city student. And the last one, as we know, e-learning, e-education involve high cost of infrastructure of starting. So we need to think of the way how to reduce the cost of education through e-platform. This involves the Ministry of Education, this involves the local government, and also this involves the local education provider. So in short, over here, my sharing is more on what we need to learn post-pandemic, what we need to shift in our paradigm, and also the challenges we face in the face of this new norm after pandemic. So this is my sharing from Malaysia. Once again, I want to thank the organizer of uh, this World Education Summit 2021 for inviting me to this sharing session. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting your, uh, our invitation. We are grateful to you. Next, I call upon Mr. Karanveer Sri. He is a chairman, Vishnam Global, Global Shaper, World Economic Forum, and he is a uh, TEDx speaker, IM alumnus, and mentor. Sir, I request you to share your thoughts on this particular talk, uh, topic. Mr. Karan Singh. Yeah, hi, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone in India. I'm, I'm Karan Veer Singh from Switzerland, and uh, the time right now here is uh, 3.30. Let me switch on my video. Sorry. Yeah, I hope I'm visible. So yes, thank you, Nagaraj, uh, Nagarajan ji, uh, for this great initiative, and uh, especially to all the dignitaries I have been listening to. Um, firstly, thanks to... Uh, Charles Orton Society for Research and Innovation, wherein um, you are doing so commendable work, wherein we are focusing on World Education Summit in, in, in such a, I would say, innovative manner, wherein now we have uh, uh, these kind of options to interact from the globe for one agenda without being physically present there. That's, that's, the, that's the power of technology. And uh, uh, special thanks to Dr. Abhishek Pandeji, Dr. Puneet Divedi ji. And then of course, uh, as we have heard, uh, Abdullah ji, uh, Dr. Manna ji, and uh, Mr. Gandhi ji, they were so touching and, and, and you know, uh, giving so uh, inspirational thought process. I believe I will start with a food for thought for everyone sitting in Geneva. I, I, I met a lot of people, traveled more than 30 countries in my life and uh, spoken on various topics, did a lot of work with different organizations. I feel during last stage of your life, when you are just finishing your life, what thoughts that comes to your mind when you're just finishing up with your life? According to me, I always feel uh, sometimes people say, Agar aapki legacy chhoot jai piche, so you, are achieve, you, are, you have achieved everything in life. If, if whatever you have uh, planned for yourself in the, or whatever you have uh, experience all through your lifetime. If you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, shedding up your uh, legacy, hai, wo chhod jai, that means you are, you are a legendary person. Aisa hum apne achievement ko hai. I believe what does legacy means? It's about jo aaj knowledge humne apne pure lifetime mein liya. Jaise jo, uh, when, when uh, Mr. Gandhi was speaking, I could see the, the, the burning desire in his mind to, to give everything what he has gained in his life. And that is that is the whole agenda about everyone when they finishes their life. So, and that's all about uh, exchanging knowledge, uh, transferring technology, transferring knowledge, and, and you know, uh, educating others. And, and this is something which goes till our last breath. If you feel whatever I have learned, now people know what I have learned, this is your legacy which will go on. Aapka naam rahe na rahe, aapke thoughts zaroor rahenge. And, and this is where uh, I, I experience that how we should innovative, uh, we should approach towards more innovative uh, ideas towards education. Jaha hum baat karte hai, rote learning ki, rote learning to practical learning, we have to switch. Honestly speaking, I, I, even when I travel around or even when I walk around my house or somewhere, I see a lot of small kids, I mean, aged six years, seven years of age group, they're just uh, um, like a human chain uh, 
होल्डिंग इच अदर्स हैंड्स वॉकिंग थ्रू और वो कहा जा रहे हैं दे गोइंग टू द म्यूजियम क्यों जा रहे हैं बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू लर्न द डाइवर्सिटी लर्न द हिस्ट्री मतलब उनको क्लास में बिठा के किताब में नहीं समझाया जा रहा कि म्यूजियम uh, में ले जाकर उनको हिस्ट्री बताई जा रही है दे आर दे शोइंग द रियल सॉरी दे आर दे आर शोइंग द रियल पीपल बिहाइंड वट दे हैव लर्न इन देयर लाइफ और कैसे उनको म्यूजियम्स में अगर बायोडाइवर्सिटी बतानी है तो उनको किताब उठा के दे डोंट टेल दम के बायोडाइवर्सिटी में हमारे क्या है दे टेक दम टू द फॉरेस्ट दे टेक दम टू द एप्स और टू दर टू द माउंटेन्स This is the kind of uh, knowledge we need to bring to the people जहाँ हम किताबों से ज़्यादा उनको बाहर लेकर जाएँ and and on the other side same as Dr. Manav was saying uh, we need to focus on uh, uh, teachers as well जब we have so many dignitaries so many good teachers who are sharing the knowledge we should also have something called PBI wherein perf- uh, performance based incentives for the teachers because anyway uh, there are a lot of teachers who put day and night for their children for their students and there are some who who don't put that much attention and we don't differentiate hum agar sahi ko sahi galat ko galat nahi kahenge and we put all of them on the same platform it's not a good idea so we also need to focus on the incentivization for the ch- teachers and of course i see lot of collaborations happening in geneva wherein uh, um, big big universities around the world are coming and doing bilaterals multilaterals with the different universities globally i hope uh, in 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 country like india we have a huge scope for the for the collaboration with the foreign universities wherein we start approaching uh, um, you know research centers to to exchange in in in, in uh, cross border uh, collaborations also i believe uh, a uh, lot of world uh, worldwide exchange programs are happening at every level at all stages from primary education to the higher education there also there is a huge scope which we can figure out and can start collaborating on this i'll share a small example of uh, uh, um, the education uh, scenario which i faced uh, in 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 central part of india that is madhya pradesh in indore what happens um, Uh, I, i'll give you one more introduction about me i am uh, associated with world economic forum as a global shaper from last 6 and a half years and there was a project we were doing for the uh, school kids i mean we only opted this project for india wherein the challenge we were facing was that there are lot of school children who are dropping out of the schools and especially the girl children and we could not understand the reason behind and it was it was a big big uh, kind of a challenge for us we picked the challenge we did the survey in, in in the remote areas of indore and in some villages wherein we focused and we surveyed why the kids are not ready to come to the school or why they have stopped going to the schools and it was mostly in the girls and to our surprise it was not the bad education system but it was an infrastructural support can you imagine the schools were not having even basic sanitation facilities like toilets and all and with this kind of uh, you know uh, scarcity kids were feeling shy and were not opening up with the with the with the teachers or with the with the surroundings and they stopped going to the schools after the age of 9 or 10 we we spoke to the villagers and even um, i mean i'm sure if you if you know more about indore few just few years back indore was not not even odf open defecation free city it just became few day, few years back when it became the smart city so uh, there was a huge problem of scarcity of toilets and then we spoke to, through world economic forum we spoke to one of the venture uh, capitalist groups uh, in uae that was abraj group who who agreed upon our request of uh, building toilets in these kind of schools we started uh, with with uh, one school and then another then another and uh, the focus was just to help them with all the infrastructure support we can give and fortunately uh, all this was through a grant program and fortunately uh, we could see the drop out re- uh, rates getting so drastically reduced and people were so motivated and, and believe me not just children or the students even the teachers were not motivated to come to the school uh, on daily basis just because of this i mean whenever they they see uh, their their uh, monthly periodic uh, Uh, tenure they they generally used to take leaves 
but with this kind of infrastructure support we could see the change and the best part in the whole project was it was a project for uh, 15 years wherein not just school students or the teachers who were maintaining the uh, the, the the sanitation facilities even the villagers in the surroundings were using those facilities and maintaining that in a sustainable manner so we can see not just the education system even the infrastructure support is very much required uh, to to keep the kids motivated and same we see in the post pandemic era where we, we we are seeing that people don't have even um, small basic mobile phones or the tablets to join the calls on 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 virtual uh, technology so this is also where we need to see the kind of uh, inferiority which which kids are keeping in mind that silently they are just uh, going away from the education this is also the the kind of concern which we need to focus on so i hope uh, with with the, uh, my expertise or sitting here uh, what all collaborations what all expansions we can do uh, i'd be more than happy to work for this organization to support in any way possible and uh, always there for so uh, humble dignitaries present here thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much we are grateful to you next i call upon dr aditya maheshwari uh, faculty operation management and quantitative techniques area indian institute of management indo sir over to you uh, thank you mr nagarajan and thank you to all, uh, thank you to all the organizers who have uh, provided this opportunity and platform to share my views uh, the speakers uh, before me have spoken very well uh, especially i would like to mention dr manpreet's speech which covered almost every point which i had in mind and he spoke very honestly so the one uh, thing which i want to share uh, which is relevant to the topic of uh, this meeting is that uh, the future of digital education in india and future of education in india so um, uh, i would like to share my teaching experience in that so before the pandemic Uh, there were lots of uh, talks going on uh, about the pedag changing pedagogy uh, of that there will be flipped classroom uh, digital intervention and then the corona pandemic struck and we are forced to go into those uh, platforms and we are forced to go into those pedagogies so uh, uh, from teaching community i can say we are we were pretty hesitant uh, in initially uh, to adopt to those methodologies but over the time um, uh, we were we are teachers so we were student also we adopted very well so as a, a learning after teaching one and a half years online uh, where uh, where i was only accustomed to teach offline i could say uh, uh, before that we had two mediums uh, either uh, to teach there are two possibilities either to teach a student in a classroom or not to teach so accessibility Uh, so now we have a third uh, alternative that is online so i would rate that alternative somewhere between not to be taught or to be taught in the class the first uh, and uh, what i what we realized including my students who were uh, taking up my courses and my experience in teaching is that there is no replacement no alternative of a one to one classroom teaching face to face classroom teaching there are various issues people can discuss issues about it they know it though to those who teach it and and uh, those who learn from online platform they also know it that the attention spans are lower yeah, on in online the peer learning is not there etc etc so one thing uh, which is clear to me and in my mind is there is no alternative to offline teaching this is the best mode of teaching so what is an alternative uh, what is the second best thing the second best thing we have discovered during this pandemic all of us know that instead if somebody is not coming to classroom uh, there is a middle path called digital intervention and there we should focus on and we should be honest to ourselves that this is not an alternative to classroom it is a bridge it is a bridge uh, to those who do not have technology uh, who do not have access to high quality classrooms high quality content but they they uh, Uh, this is a this is a bridge to learn no and uh, they may not be able to reach to that uh, level of knowledge where student uh, teacher and student are interacting face to face but nevertheless this is a very uh, good alternative that have come up and third thing is not teaching anyway so that is the worst part and this uh, technology intervention helped us in navigating uh, in this extremely difficult times and and more or less to me especially our institute uh, did not had any uh, 
lost batches though we were delay we, there were delays in starting the batches but due to the zoom platform and the other online platforms including the online examination platform we have not lagged it yes but i can say that we uh, if the class uh, compared to the classroom teaching yes we lagged in some of the learning experience and uh, students know how the exams were held and how the results were out for the plan, uh, 10th and then plus 2 so uh, all uh, about all these pros and cons we should be uh, there is an th alternative medium and i think it is the future in which uh, we can provide an high quality uh, intervention uh, to a uh, students who had, do not have any access second thing is that a online platform can be a sort of a uh, alternative if the classroom size is very small uh, say up to means my guess is if there are between 10 to 15 students and a teacher can focus on each and every student with their taking their video on and interacting with them personally then it can mask some of the disadvantages which are present in non offline mode so this is uh, one uh, insight which i want to share my personal insights and uh, only last one point uh, i want to like to make in a general point is that uh, the previous speakers has spoke about uh, uh, various aspects of education i would like just like to add one point on that aspect of education that we should focus on truth truthfulness satya that is the most important thing and everything else will follow if we uh, practice what we preach and be truthful to ourselves and we uh, always uh, say truth and truth always and it should not uh, compensate or it should not mask itself in a sort of a greater good or a short term good of the society okay. and uh, the previous speakers have spoken that uh, united nations have failed and all other things are then but uh, we have not gone into the reasons why they have failed uh, one of the reason i can see that uh, in our speeches and uh, we using very flowery words uh, we try to mask the truth and try to present ourselves in a in a peace loving or in a well maintained individual but several times uh, peace is good but it masks the truth therefore i think uh, in the long run these organizations uh, fail to achieve their objective though they have a very noble cause uh, and the very noble goal uh, they have started with. so with this uh, my limited submission i would like to conclude my speech uh, thank you organizers and thank you nagarajan for providing me the opportunity thank you dr aditya i 100% agree with you so in future we have to go with 50% offline and 50% online so it will be like a blended kind of thing so there is no other go we have to migrate from conventional method to digital uh, platform uh, i now i invite uh, professor uh, b n sinha alumnus iit senior professor birla institute of technology mesha professor b n sinha over to you Dr. Sinha, okay. Next, I call upon Dr. Prashant, Associate Professor, Ramanujam Fellow, Center for PLO Biosciences and Biomedical Engineering. Indian Institute of Technology, Indore, Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Prashant, over to you. Thank you very much to the organizers. Thank you, Dr. Nagaraja. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfectly. Okay. So uh, the previous speakers have touched upon all the important aspect related to what I was trying to articulate in my session or my uh, part of the speech. Uh, and therefore i would emphasize and pick those points which i thought are pertinent and very relevant i know uh, dr aditya maheshwari has talked, uh, talked about the online education there are lots of advantages of it there are limitations and the covid 19 pandemic emphasized that yes indeed in person teaching has no substitute and role of a teacher is very very important in the development in the process of learning and teaching 
Apart from these superficial issues, I just want to talk about some fundamental issues. I want to ask question, are we doing right investment in the foundation of students making? Are we investing a lot of resources, efforts, money for the primary education? Is our curriculum giving justice to the children who are future of this small village, the whole earth? So I think most important thing for us that what Dr. Aditya told that truth-based society, and that can only happen, I'll just pick from there, that our curriculum should be blended in such a way that we take care of morals, values, and ethics in our curriculum. There should be a way to inculcate these values in our students until and unless we have that. The honest society, honest community can only make sure that there is a progress and there is a peace. Many a time, we think that these are the things which are taken care by a family. But families are now outsourcing all these issues to the school. The teachers or the education system and the schools and colleges have considered that as a business platform. Just they are considered uh, that they should work on uh, making profit. And if your objective is to make profit, you will not make sure that holistic education is given to students. Your objective is making profit, then you will not make sure that students are learning morals and ethics and they're being honest or not. Because education its institutions themselves are not honest. Same time, teachers, they are very aggressive for their rights, but are we equally responsible for our responsibilities? That's the hard question we need to ask. If we teachers, we fulfill our role, and we inculcate the rose values and we become a role model. Previous speaker told that our teachers' role model are the ideals and idols. Who is responsible for that? Are teachers responsible for that or not? Is behavior of a teacher is ideal so that students should feel that, yes, this is the life I want to follow? We should ask that question. At the same time, we should also ask, what is the society asking for? What is the responsibility of a society? Is society asking for value-based education? Where is the pressure coming from society where they are demanding and dictating the school that this is what I want in a curriculum? So I feel that everyone of the society, whether it is parents, family, education institutes, and most important role of teachers, as well as the policymakers and government, they should make sure that we create and inculcate scientific temper in our society. Until and unless we have scientific temper in our society, we will not expect that we will have innovators of future. If that mindset is not there in the students, they will be just copy pasting things. So fundamental reforms and interventions are required from the memory-based education system to thinker-based innovation system. I myself as a teacher at IIT face a lot of problems regarding the originality of the thoughts and originality of the language. Because until they graduate, they are taught how good they are in copy. And they are evaluated based on a person who is good in copy. If we don't discourage that and encourage them, whatever way they articulate their own thoughts in their own language, in their own words, that originality will not come. So a lot of interventions are required at different levels in schools, in colleges, and in society as a large. And that foundation, the single basic unit of a society, the family, they need to ask these questions. Am I going to just make a money? And that asset, that property is going to be there with me or my responsibility is also there with my kids. And therefore, I may be earning little less for those well-to-do families and invest quality time with the kids so that they get value-based moral education so that future of this world is bright. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dr. Prashant. A small announcement, a small announcement to all the panelists over here. If I miss out anybody's name, uh, just uh, text your name in the chat box. Uh, meantime, I would like to share the uh, pamphlet of uh, 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 yesterday and today's event and uh, the posters of various speakers and the invitation we have communicated to uh, Ministry of uh, Education, Government of India, and the response we have received from uh, Ministry of Education, from Secretary, uh, uh, from uh, Ministry of Education for your kind uh, information. So meantime, you can post your, uh, text your name in the chat box. So we are thankful to Modern Group of Institution. Uh, they are our academic partner. And uh, the day one yesterday, we had a detailed deliberation on grassroots approach. And today we are discussing about the journey towards a new world. We had wonderful 21 speaker yesterday and today also we have 21 speakers. So we have invited 42 speakers for this particular uh, World Education Summit. Uh, we are thankful to all the speakers Chief Guest and Guest of Honours. And these are our organizer, sponsors. And we are very much thankful to uh, Government of India, uh, Ministry of MSME for giving constant support, uh, Ministry of Education, Government of India for their encouragement, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India, and Department of Science and Technology. Actually, uh, uh, we are expecting uh, education minister in today's uh, session but uh, suddenly got a call from uh, pmo office so he, he could not able to join today but he'll be joining on some other occasion so this is for your information we are thankful to our chief guest guest of honor and various speakers from different parts of country And these are the communication with the uh, Secretary of Minister Secretary. So on behalf of CWSCR, I convey my sincere gratitude to all the uh, uh, partners, supporting partners, academic partners, and the government agencies for their constant support and encouragement for making this uh, uh, a two days uh, grand summit possible. If I miss out anybody's name, so for I request all the panelists to switch on your video to capture the virtual go photo. I request all the panelists to switch on your video. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So it is time to conclude uh, the two days, uh, the grand uh, virtual summit on education. I would like to start my concluding remarks with the same message. Yesterday I have conveyed my sincere gratitude to all the guests, chief guests and guests of honor and speakers. So without you, this particular session and this particular event would not be possible. So the very grateful to all the speakers from different parts of country. And ho I hope you all have enjoyed yourself today and learned something. What an exciting day. We have 42 talented speakers from different countries from yesterday and today. After listening to many of your views and seeing examples of your work, 
you have reminded me that talented people simply are not as tied down by conventional thinking as the rest of us because you see problems differently you tend to arrive at different solutions that is such an incredible but undervalued resource thank you all again for being here and i encourage you all to stay connected with each other on the road ahead we'll meet again on some other grand occasion with the different agenda and with the different panelists until then take care good night